Hello, and welcome, da welcome back to my tutorial series on how to build a human head in Blender. This is part three, and it is how to model the eyes. And we're, <laughs> I said that strangely, eyes. Uh, we're gonna build the loop around the eyes, and yeah, I'll teach you guys how to do that. So, let's position our 3D cursor so that it is in the middle of the eyes. Uh, in our previous tutorial, we had aligned our reference images so that the lips would be aligned, but now we need to align them so that the eyes will be aligned. So, so let's go ahead and do that. Go to background images and we move the front one. So why don't we just move that back to zero so that our eye creases are realigned. Okay, so as before, we're just gonna center in on the pupil and we're just gonna add in another circle and rotate it. And actually, let's delete that circle. Forgot to do something. We need to find the center point, the center point on this model, which is currently at the z-axis, right along the z-axis. So, if we tap into edit mode on our cheek ring, I guess you could call it, and select this vertice right here, or any of them along the z-axis line, Shift S cursor to selected. We need to put our 3D cursor on that, so that when we add in a circle. We can then, let me start my display on my string cast keys. Okay, then we can have our, have our circle right on the middle. So when we add in a mirror modifier, after rotating this, add a mirror modifier, mirror, make sure clipping is unchecked so that when we grab it across, oh, I'm sorry, undo that. You have to grab it across in edit mode you couldn't see it because I was not in wireframe view, but grab it, aclo grab it across in, in wireframe view and move it. Now you'll have two separate circles, both controlled by just the right circle. So that makes things a lot easier on us. We can recheck clipping now. Okay, so let's go ahead and define our basic eye shape. So move the front vertices first, like we've been doing before. Do, you can do one view at a time, or you can, every time you move a vertice, you can go ahead and align it on the other view. It doesn't really matter, but we're just going to get the most basic shape that we can. We just move the position of these so that we can get one here, and here, and here. Go ahead and keep that corner. There we go. Now let's move them here. So. You have to keep in mind where on the body this vertice is. So this is about just above the corner of his uh, of his eye. So we're going to move it about there. This one is roughly in this position. Well, let's move that one back a little bit. This one should be there. I don't know how well you guys can see these images with the screencast keys. Hopefully, or with the screencast going on. Um, hopefully, it's not too low quality but you have your own, so maybe it's not too bad. Okay, so now select everything, eat extrude, grab it out, or scale it out, and let's just move them so that they are following like the flow of his skin, so like where it's sloping downwards. I know that was very artistic sounding, but that's kind of what you're doing. Let's go back into wireframe. Okay. The eyes are something that can be hard to get the correct positioning. But if you later go back and adjust them, you should be fine always go back and readjust the shape that is something that we were doing that we will be doing continuously throughout, the, throughout this tutorial okay that's fine I guess I guess that's a fine shape so now let's uh, extrude them out again or extrude out this outer ring E to extrude scale it out let's move these guys in so that they're not going into that 
He knows his space. He's out. You have to be careful not to give your eyes uh, the effect that they're being pushed out of the skull in a way. In a lot of my models, the eyes look like they're not sunken, sunken in. So you have to be careful to make sure that you make it seem like your eyes, like they're eye sockets in a way. seeing the right view you need to do a lot of work okay something good to do is to add in a sphere so that you can get the correct shape of the eyelid being around the eye so why don't we shift a or with D selected uh, with the middle ring selected shift a add a cursor or cursors cursor to selected and then shift a add in a uva sphere and scale it to about the relative size of a eye and rotate it try to get it roughly to what you think his eye would be the size of and move it Okay, so you can see that we uh, we have some problems, so why don't we deal with those right now? It looks like it, everything just needs to be rotated. R on the Z. Okay. These ones have to be dragged out. And basically you want your vertices to not look like they're sticking to the eyeball, but to be as close as they can to it. And you really just have to pan around with your camera to see. You can see right here we have a lot of space between our vertice and the eyeball. We don't want that. So we're just going to have to keep moving it in. And we will have to add some more geometry for this. Why don't we drag this loop in a lot. Okay, so control R, let's add in a loop right here so that we can get rid of that mesh that is going through. Right here also, control R, and drag it out so that you can have a more defined mesh. Drag that out. Let's drag that one in. So we're slowly getting the eye lid shape. And these, this bottom loop also, those vertices have to be sticking to the eyeball because those are part of the eyelid. Okay. Now the cool thing about having circular loops like we have here is that you can add in more geometry without affecting, well, without having the trouble of later affecting future geometry. So control R to add in a ring right here and we can move all of these vertices around. And when we go back to connect all of our separate objects that we've made so far, this extra geometry won't pose a problem to us because it is on a circular loop, which is nice. Okay, that looks fine. So if we rotate our eyeball, we don't want it to intersect anywhere, and it's not 
Although right here, rotate it a little bit and move it back. Rotate. Now let's just look at our reference again, make sure we're not getting too far off. Move these guys up. And let's just move this back. So after all of that moving, let's just realign everything with our reference image. So now these, this top loop is this crease on his head. So we want those to be a little bit more inward to give the illusion of his top eyelid. Okay, now these are way too far out, or perhaps our eye is way too far in. Could be either way. Yeah, it looks like our eye might be a little too far in. So let's tap into edit mode on our eye, select everything, move it out just a bit, and now just move our eyeball, our eyeball reference out. So that's back out. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so now on our cheek mesh, why don't we just move that a little bit now to fit our eye so that maybe we can see where this is going to attach. Okay. Might have to do some work with that later, but that looks fine. Okay. Okay, so thank you for watching this tutorial and stay tuned for the next part.